Welcome everyone to Gamer Melt. Currently, I'm working on a really cool video that should be coming out soon, so I thought I'd do a talking head video today. Luckily, there's a lot of really big stories out, starting with budget, rising 7,000 board prices, first ARC benchmarks, RTX 4090 performance without DLSS, and a brand new GPU maker is here with a wildly new design. But first, with all these new releases coming out, make sure you stay up to date by joining Meld Alerts. It's completely free, and basically, when major PC hardware is released, I'll send you a notification. Plus, I'll tell you when you can get great deals, you can actually get it at a great price. I may even send some build suggestions from time to time. With that said, let me know what releases you're most excited about by dropping a comment below. And don't worry, I'm not going to flood your inbox. Some weeks you won't get anything, and others you might get a few. To sign up, just visit meldalerts.com and fill out the form. It's just your email. Once again, that's meldalerts.com. Okay. It's news time, and first up for today, AMD's upcoming mid to somewhat low-end B650 boards have finally dropped. Motherboard makers are showing their designs off, but they aren't revealing pricing. Luckily, B&H actually provided quite a bit of prices for some of the first B650 boards, and not so luckily, well, they don't look good. As you can see right here, these are MSI boards, and it starts starts at $199.99. Now, these could be placeholder prices, but I don't know, we are talking B&H here. This is an official US retailer. They will put stuff up for pre-order. They do know pricing before others a lot of times. Now that doesn't mean that this isn't placeholder pricing, but as we've seen pretty much across the industry, prices look to be going up by quite a bit, likely because of different issues we are still experiencing from things like the pandemic. Then we obviously also have inflation quite a bit of things going on right now, so this really could be it. As an example, really quickly, we can see that right now the B550M Pro Wi-Fi is $120. Now, obviously, this is an older board, but at least from what I've seen, this is right around the price it has always been. Now, there is some potential good news in that when AMD announced the AM5 platform, they said motherboards will start from $125 US dollars. So obviously this is significantly higher, but maybe they're gonna be announcing something other than a B650, maybe back to the A series. I really don't know, but one bad news is the fact that none of these are actually B650E. Remember that just like the X670 boards, the B650 boards also have an E or extreme variant. Well, none of these are that variant. So these boards could get even more expensive. Basically, things are not looking all that great for AMD's upcoming AM5 boards for their well budget lineup. Hopefully they do offer some boards that are cheaper, but as of right now, well, it's a bit scary. And next up for today, we finally get a chance to look at some real benchmarks for Intel's upcoming ARC GPUs. So far, we've mostly just seen engineering samples of these GPUs being tested, but at least from what this looks like, these are likely final retail versions. And when we move down here, we can see that these are done in Geekbench, and they are compute tests. We have Vulkan API and OpenCL. These obviously aren't anything like 3D Mark tests, so they aren't really going to give you an exact result for gaming but it at least gives you kind of an idea of what kind of compute performance these can get. Either way, when we look, the 16 gigabyte A770 is just under the RTX 3060 and Vulkan API, and in OpenCL, it is just over it. So we're looking at right around that RTX 3060 performance. Then when we look at the A750, we can see that it gets fairly close to the 6700 XT and Vulkan API, or at least from what I saw, I believe it's just slightly over the 6600 XT, though of course it does lose quite a bit in OpenCL, but as you can see, these aren't bad at all. Of course, the A750, if you didn't know, is in fact being released on October 12th for $289, or at least starting at $289. So not a bad price point. We'll have to see how it does in games in particular, but at least as of these, when we're looking at them, it does look really good. Moving on, we have 
some real benchmarks of Intel's RTX 4090. Specifically, we are looking at CUDA benchmarks. We can see down here, this is in Geekbench 5, and it scored a very impressive 424,332. Now, the really important part about this is that this does not include anything like their ray tracing or DLSS 3.0. This is more gonna be regular rasterization type performance. And while it isn't anything like 3D Mark, it does give us a decent idea of what we can expect. And as you can see, when we compare it to say the 3090 Ti, we're looking at just over 60% higher performance. Yet when compared to the 3090, we're looking at around 75% higher. Now, those are very good numbers, but at the same time, they aren't anywhere near that two times performance increase in rasterization that we heard from NVIDIA when these were announced. Maybe in 3D Mark it will look better or in actual games, but it looks like NVIDIA may have been pushing so hard with performance numbers with DLSS 3.0 for a very good reason. Like I've mentioned in past videos, DLSS 3.0, at least for now, is only for the RTX 4000 cards, so at least it seems like they're mostly comparing games that have that. The issue with that is that DLSS 3.0 3.0 is required to be programmed into the game rather than just any game at working and getting a boost in performance from. No, it has to be in the game. And if you don't like upscaling, things like that, I will say they've been getting significantly better, but sometimes they do introduce artifacts and other problems in the game. So if you do still prefer to use the real 4K rendered image, this is a way more important metric. And really this is the metric except for adding RTX, but this is the real metric where you get to see just how much more powerful this GPU really is compared to last gen, not just in very specific workloads. And lastly for today, there's been quite a bit of rumors going around that says Intel isn't very happy with their ARC GPU lineup, that the company is somewhat debating, not necessarily that it's a done deal, but they're actually debating on stopping with production of GPUs in the future, just potentially canning their graphics processors altogether. We heard something like, oh, come next gen Battle Mage, they'll have a little something here and there, nothing all that great, and then by Celestial, they may not have anything and be completely done with their ARC GPUs. Now, I will say that Raja has been bucking this trend, but as we've seen with things like the recent downfall of Google Stadia, just because a company says something doesn't necessarily mean it's true. One thing that absolutely does lend credence to the fact that Intel is very serious about this, they do understand that this is gonna be a hard road for them, but they're ready to push forward anyway, is seeing things like this. As you can see here, Acer has actually decided to go with Intel down here actually it says Acer has announced its entry into the graphics card market officially. So we have yet another new GPU maker that's here. Of course with EVGA now out of the market there's some pretty big shoes to fill. But what's interesting about this is that Acer has announced this not with Nvidia or AMD but with Intel by announcing a new A770 flagship GPU. As you can see right here in the announcement, it says introducing the all new Intel graphics, Intel Arc A770 GPU, which we've christened Predator Bifrost. There's one really interesting thing about this GPU that sets it apart from pretty much all others. As you can see right here, it at least looks like we're dealing with a GPU with two completely different fans. This right here looks like more of the blower style fan, while this is a traditional you know, regular fan that you see on most GPUs. How this could help with inherent issues with blower style fans, i.e. noise, problems like that that we've seen in the past, I'm really not sure. Regardless, it's always nice to see a new competitor enter the market simply because they might be able to do stuff no one else can. Just like how EVGA did some really awesome stuff, maybe, just maybe, Acer can come in and bring their own style to the market. So while that does it for today, are you pumped for NVIDIA's next-gen GPUs or are you actually getting pretty excited by Intel's ARC GPUs? Let me know down in the comments below. And if you liked the video, please subscribe. And as always, have a great day.